I have shared a couple of videos in the past about separating the RGB channels of an image. In this video, let's have a look at achieving this by only using blend modes, which can also be used to do a CMI separation. For separating the RGB channels, I'm going to use the multiply blend mode. Why? Let me explain by giving you some background info on blend mode calculations. For blend mode calculations, the value of the channels are represented by a number between 0 and 1, where 1 presents the max color value for the color space we are working on. So, in an 8-bit RGB document, 1 would represent 255, and the value of 0 0.5 will represent 127 or 128, depending on how you round. So knowing this, let's look in detail what the multiply blend mode does. As the name states, it multiplies the channel color values of the base and the blend layer. And what is special about multiplying? Well, when you multiply a value with 1, you get the same value. And multiplying with 0 always returns 0. So multiplying a color with a pure channel color, like red, will only return the red value. And this is exactly what we want for channel separation. Let's apply this theory to our example image. I will make a duplicate of it and add a fill layer. By using the color slider, I will make the fill layer pure red. Now I can move it as a clip child and set its blend mode to multiply. And we get the red channel. I can repeat this process for the other channels by duplicating this layer and changing the colors of the fill layers to green and blue. Perfect! We now have the RGB channels separated in three different layers. Let's group them and name the group. To restore the original colors from the RGB layers, we're going to apply the Add Blend mode. Let's have a quick look why the Add Blend mode will work. As the name states, it just adds the RGB values of the colors. Because the RGB layers only have values for the channel they represent, adding them will get the original color back. Let's get back to our RGB group and select all of them and change their blend mode to add. Interesting, we get a super bright version of the image. Any ideas why? Well. This is because the last layer in the group is also set to add blend mode and it propagates down to our image layer below. If I turn off the original image layer, we get the original colors back. So we can either put the blend mode of the last layer to normal or I can add the black fill layer at the bottom. So the blend mode of the last channel does not go out of the group. By the way, using other additive blend modes for the channel layers like screen or lighten will also do the same job. Pretty awesome. Now let's look how we can do a CMI separation. In order to find out how we can do this, first we need to find out what is special about the CMI colors. Let's take cyan as an example. I will add a fill layer and use the RGB slider to set its color to cyan. If we look closely, you notice that for cyan, the green and the blue values are always maxed out. Cyan is in fact the red channel, but instead of having the green and the blue set to zero, they're all maxed out. So to create the cyan channel, we want to keep the red value and make sure that the green and blues are all maxed out. Let's go back to the add blend mode. One thing I didn't mention is that in blend mode calculations, the result of a calculation can never be larger than 1. The result values will always be clipped to 1. We can use this feature to achieve what we want. If we apply the cyan color in add blend mode, the red channel value will stay the same, as adding with 0 has no effect. And the other two channels will be maxed out as we are already adding the max value to them. Let's get back to our image and test our theory. I will again make a duplicate of the image and set the cyan fill layer as a clipped child. Now let's see what happens if I change the blend mode to add. Excellent, we get the cyan channel. 
I can now repeat the same steps for magenta and yellow. Once I have my CMI layers, I will group them and give it a name. Now that we have our CMI channels, let's see how we can reconstruct the original colors. Well, actually it is pretty easy. We just need to set them to multiply blend mode. As the not used channel values are all maxed out or having a 1, multiplying by 1 will copy over the value from the layer where the channel value is used. I hope this makes sense. Just similar with the RGB, the last layer blend mode is being propagated down. This is why we get this multiplied image. To stop that, I can add a black fill layer at the bottom. Well, as you might have expected, that didn't work. We are now multiplying with zero, and this kind of kills the yellow layer on top of it. If we want to keep the same values, we need to multiply with one. So setting the layer to white will fix our problem. This is pretty cool, but let me share another blend mode we can use, but this time with the RGB colors as a base. I will duplicate the RGB group and go to the red channel we created. If I now use the divide blend mode, I also get the cyan channel. Pretty awesome. But let's try to understand what is happening. The divide blend mode, as the name states, does the opposite of the multiply blend mode and divides the values. There is a special case, however, though. When dividing by zero, the result will always be one. Normally, dividing by zero is not allowed, but let's suppose you divide with a very small number, close to zero. The result will be probably a number larger than one, and as mentioned earlier, blend calculation results are always clipped between zero and one. So in this sense, it makes sense that dividing by zero results in one. This feature exactly does what we are looking for. It keeps the red channel value, but maxes out the green and the blue channel values, resulting in cyan colors. Excellent! Let me continue to do the same for the other channels. And just as before, we need to make sure the last layer is a white fill layer. Now that we know how to separate these colors, what can we do with them? You can, for example, create glitch effects by misaligning the color layers. But we can also use them for color correction or for creative use. For example, I can add a curves adjustment to the yellow channel and adjust the strength of it by adjusting the curve we just added. We could also have done this without the color separation. Let me duplicate the original image and apply a curves adjustment to it. If I go to the blue channel in the curves adjustment, I can change the blue curve to get the same result. So, why would you split the colors as you can make changes in the channels of the adjustment? Well, one simple reason would be to get a better overview. I now have a clear overview by looking at the layers panel that I have modified the yellow or the blue channel. By looking at the curves adjustment in the original image, you cannot directly see what channel it affects. But I think the biggest advantage, in my opinion, is that I can now control the blend range of each channel. For example, with the yellow channel, I can lower the effect of it on specific ranges and control how it interacts with the other colors. You get very nice color effects by simply adjusting the curve and the blend range. Trying to get the same effect with regular adjustment would probably take more effort. Also, once you start changing the blend ranges, the order of the channel layers starts playing a role. If I move the magenta to the top, it immediately creates a different effect, as the blend range of the yellow now applies only to the cyan below. In the next upcoming videos, I will share some interesting effects using separate channel layers. Thank you for watching, keep safe and until the next video.